Hello everyone, my name is Diu Han Shi. I'm a PhD student from Michigan State University. Today I'm going to present bounded model checking for hyperproperties. This is a joint work with Professor Cesar Sanchez from MDA Software Institute and my advisor Professor Borju Bernagapur from Michigan State University. So let me first motivate the idea of our work. We are interested in model checking hyperproperties, where hyperproperty is a framework that describes the behaviors of multiple traces from a system by evaluating sets of traces simultaneously with respect to some form of specifications that is usually expressed in temporal logic. For instance, look at this simple program on the slide, where we define high as a security variable with high security and low as a public variable with low security. We consider this information flow of the program secure if low variable and high variable are independent from each other. This requirement can be expressed as the security property non-interference using hyperreal formula, which is for all traces, there exists another trace such that they have different value on high variable, but always have the same value on their low variables. In this example, we can observe that because a low variable is changing the value from false to true based on the value of high variable, so they are not independent from each other. Thus, we say this program violates non-interference. From this example, we can see that with the power of presenting the relationship among multiple traces, there are many important security requirements that can only be expressed using hyperproperties. Besides the non-interference we just mentioned, Linearizability is another important security hyperproperty for a concurrent data structure, where we say the structure satisfies linearizability if all executions are linearizable. It can be expressed in a for exists hyper LTL formula, as you see here, but in order to capture this requirement, we also allowed each quantifier to range over different models, that is, the history of all executions on a concurrent data structure must always match with some sequential order of invocation and responses from a model that only allows sequential execution. This is one of the cases we investigate in our case study section, and by using this technique of quantifying different models, we are able to find the linearizability bug in a complicated concurrent data structure. Another application of hyperproperty is for solving the synthesis problem of robotic planning. For instance, Synthesizing the shortest path for a controllable robot on a given environment is equivalent to um, finding a trace that is able to reach the goal position earlier compared to all other traces. This is re uh, a requirement that can also be well expressed using hyper LTL formula. We also implement different robotic planning problem in the case study section where we are able to synthesize path for controllable agents on a large grid that can scale up to size of six by six. Now, previously, some methods of hyperactive verifications were introduced and can verify hyperproperties with given models successfully. However, one of the big challenges here in verifying hyper-LTO was the quantifier alternations, which was not able to be well handled easily and efficiently. So in this work, inspired by the successful model checking technique, bounded model checking, we proposed bounded model checking for hyperproperty, followed by the reduction of original bounded model checking, which was reducing from LTO verification to set solving, here, we reduce the problem of hyper-LTL verification to QBF solving. The big picture of how we implement this idea is giving, given a model and a property, we first obtain the negation to perform, perform body model checking. Next, we construct a QBF formula with respect to the model and the specifications. And then, we feed the whole QBF formula into a QBF solver. Finally, based on the set or unset results from the QBF solver, we infer back the correct answer to the original model checking problem. By using this approach, we are able to handle all general form of hyper formula, including the formula that have complicated quantifier automations. In the case study section, we also demonstrate the scalability and efficiency of our idea by being able to solve a rich set of hyper-property applications. So first, 
in bound and bound checking, loop condition is very important for completeness. Loop condition is also the reason why verifying hyper LTO using bounded model checking is a challenging problem. For example, consider this structure on the slide. If we want to check a hyper LTO formula in the form of for all for all, we need to check through all possible pairs of traces and their relationship in order to draw a correct conclusion. This is difficult because, for example, we might find this red pack here who is taking the loop back from S2 to S1. Also, we might find another blue pack here who decide not to take the loop. So in here, you can see when we have more and more loops in our model, the verification problem suddenly becomes more and more complicated. In this work, we are not able to address this part yet. However, we still want to build this satisfaction relation in order to verify hyper LTO using bounded model checking. So now we introduce different semantics to uh, correctly interpret the model checking results from bounded observations. The first semantics we have is called pessimistic semantics. In pessimistic, if a counterexample is found with some bound K, we consider all future events as unfulfillable as well. For example, if we want to verify the hypergeal formula for all for all pair of traces, um, P if and only if P on this model, then the counting symbol of V would be a pair of traces that satisfy the negation of the original formula. Assume our bound for B and Z is three, then start from S0, we will explore all pair of traces that has length as three. Take this blue and green pair as an example, if we evaluate them simultaneously, we can see that because this pair has different values of P on the third step. So it is a counterexample that fulfills not by. So since a counterexample is found within bound, we use pessimistic semantics to conclude the result that is the formula satisfied not by within three steps. So it satisfies not by infinitely as well. Thus, we say the model does not satisfy the original five in the infinite semantics. Another semantics we are having here is optimistic semantics, which is completely dual with the pessimistic semantics. For optimistic, we say if a formula is witnessed as true within finite bound, then all future events are considered as fulfillable as well. Take the same example again. If now we want to evaluate the formula for all pi 1, there exists pi 2 such that eventually p on pi 1 if I only if q on pi 2. Again, we set bound as 3 and look through all possible traces here we can see on this structure. As we can observe, there is no trace on the model that can really satisfy not phi, since no count example can be found here. We use optimistic semantics to conclude that the critical structure K does not satisfy not by within three steps, implying that K is not refutable in infinite semantics. Thus, we say K satisfies the original phi. We also have another two variations, halting pessimistic and halting optimistic semantics, which are particularly for systems that have terminating states. But we'll skip that here now because for, of the time. But in general, they have similar interpretation as the semantics we just introduced. So here, concluding the theory, we have different semantics that help us to capture the correct satisfaction relation of bounded model checking for hyper LTO by just observing finite traces. Next, we introduce the detail of how we build the qubit formula whose satisfaction result can infer the answer of the model checking problem. Given a hyperlocal formula 5 and a family of critical structure k because as we mentioned earlier, we allow quantifiers to range over different models. So assume bound is k, we obtain a boolean transition formula for each quantifier in order to explore the trace variables that is quantifying. And then we encode the hyperlocal formula by unrolling are unrolling it based on the temporal logic, also based on different semantics that we choose for this formula. And finally, we construct the final qubit formula where according to the set or unset result of solving this QBF, we are able to answer the original model checking problem, which correct 
the correct infinite inference is from the previous slide where we introduced the theory about uh, different semantics. In the last part, um, we select three case studies to present today out of our seven cases that we implement in the paper. The first one is verifying non-perference on a multi graduate program. As we saw at the beginning, non-interference makes sure information flow between low variable and high variable is secure. In this program, we have pin as high variable and results as low variable. Without going too much into the detail of the program, in general, we have three different threads here that are controlling the value of pin and results. Thus, the hyperlocal formula for this problem is as follows. Notice that because this is a terminating program, so we use halting condition here. That's why we have those holds in the formula. Using the technique of encoding this model and the formula into PDF and solve it, um, for an unsafe version of this program, which leaks the high security information to a uh, low variable, we are able to falsify it uh, by finding a counterexample using halting pessimistic semantics. On the other hand, if we um, set the pin value correct, uh, this correct version of the program act, uh, is actually satisfying non interference. We use halting optimistic semantics to verify it. The second case we are having here is the linearizability for concurrent data structure. We investigate the concurrent data structure named SNARK which is a double-ended queue. As we can see here, there are four functions, pop right, pop left, push right, and push left. These are the way how SNARK used to push and pop different nodes with different values onto the double-ended queue. Um, we used this hyperlocal formula we mentioned earlier to verify this concurrent data structure with another version that only allow sequential executions. Using our technique, we are able to catch the two very subtle bugs on this data structure, which are two scenarios that creates non-linearizable execution history. Bug one is caused by two threads, P1 and P2, that assume originally the queue has one element. If while P1 is trying to pop right, at the same time, P2 quickly go to push right and pop left. It will make P1 read the wrong value of its local references and thus return empty for the pop operations while the queue is actually not empty. Bug 2 is even more complicated. In Bug 2, we have three threads, P1, P2, and P3, that execute multiple push and pop operations concurrently. We don't have time for the detail for Bug 2, but I'm showing on the slide that if we three threads have this execution history, then the, a node can actually be removed from this double-ended queue twice, which means this is a non-linearizable history. So Snark, as one of our most complex case study, although the QBF encoding of the model and formula is massive after we convert them into QBF formula, our method is still able to spot the incorrect behavior caused by interleaving of multiple threads precisely and show that SNARK actually violates linearizability. The last one we have is the optimal path planning problem for robots. A shortest path can be expressed using the hypertrophic formula I'm showing here. We implement a square grid, which red grid is the initial positions, and the green grid is the goal positions. The black grids are the walls that we don't allow robots to hit on. By solving the model together with um, the formula, we are able to synthesize this shortest path on this grid mark as the blue arrows here on the figure. And another case for robotic planning is the initial state robustness problem, which we can be captured using this hyperlocal formula as well. And on a map like this, this blue path is a robust path that we can guide any controllable robots from any arbitrary initial state to reach the goal position by following this strategy. So this path planning case in general shows another possible applications we can do by being able to solve hyper properties since a witness is a trace that actually satisfies the hyper itself. 
So we can use this fact to solve synthesis problem. The summary table here concludes our case studies. The two yellow columns on the right side are presenting that we calculate the total time took for solving includes the time took for first unrolling a model and generating QBF formula, and second, the time took for QBF solving. In general, our approach is able to do um, body model checking for hyper-OTO for a rich set of different models with a variety of formulas and use the set or unset results to be able to correctly verify or falsify the hyper property. We also have this extra table that compare our method with another um, previous introduced method for robotic planning using SMT solver. As you can see, our results, which are highlighted in green, perform better in solving optimal path planning, where the size of the environment can scale up to larger and larger size. In conclusion, uh, in this work, we, int we introduce the body model checking technique for verification of hyperproperties expressed in hyperLTL. And to handle different quantified alternations, we introduce the BMC, we reduce the BMC problem to QBF solving. Also, we proposed different semantics that ensure the soundness of inferring the outcome from B QBF solving to the model checking problem. And last, through a rich set of case studies, we demonstrate the effectiveness and efficiency of our approach in verification of information flow security, linear readability, or path planning for robotics. As for future work, our first step is to solve the loop condition problem to establish completeness condition for BNC. Also, application of QBF-based technique using abstraction or refinement is another unexplored area. And since BMC for hyperproperties inherently depend on the effectiveness or of QBF solver, so getting more progress in QBF solving will definitely improve the efficiency of our implementation as well. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you and have a good day.